Hey guys, this is Thomas from Stylized Station and it is officially here. Mixer 2020 by Quixel. Uh, they just released the announcement today and I've honestly never used it before so I wanted to hop in and give you guys a beginners and complete novices look into this just so you guys can see exactly what to expect. It is a completely free download and is free completely forever. So I highly suggest you download it yourself. But we're gonna go through a few of these sample files here and I'm gonna poke around and you're gonna see exactly what it's like as a beginner where I don't know anything about it. Now I do have a lot of experience with other texturing software such as Substance Designer and Substance Painter. So I am gonna have a basic understanding of a few things but I really wanted to see how intuitive the user interface is and how cool it is. I'm actually extremely excited to try this out. So right when you download it, you're faced with this right here. Uh, it's got a few sample projects that are all ready to go. I'm gonna choose a random one, let's say broken tiles, why not? And we're gonna go ahead and open it once it loads everything in. So first impressions, the actual user face itself, already compared to let's say Substance Painter, this is much more simplified. I can already understand almost everything that's going on right away. Now, this is obviously the user interface and if I click around a bit, yep, the Alt and left click rotates it. So I've already figured out how to rotate. Lighting looks like it's shift and right click, just like most other softwares. And the middle button pans the camera. So just like that, right off the bat, I've already got a decent understanding of how to manipulate the actual user interface. Now I'm gonna assume the indoor tab here is for lighting. So if I drop down, we're gonna get lighting changes. So let's change to something a little more neutral color like a studio lighting. And from here, I can change different camera views, very simple. And that's the back view and let's go to perspective. Great, so far so good, awesome. In terms of the actual viewport itself, it's done here and the local library is most likely all of their assets, which it is, very cool. So when I clicked on it, it just added it in there in Control Z to remove it, very cool. So let's move on to this side of the window, which is the layers tab, I'm, I'm assuming. The, the tab is very similar to Substance Painter from what I can see and everything is done by layers, not by nodes, great. Awesome, I actually kind of do prefer it, the layer Photoshop style stack. And I can guess once I click on a um, layer that the actual um, extra details panel is added in right here. So you can see as I switch through, it cycles through the correct one. So this is pretty much all you really need in terms of a software to get everything up and running. So great. Now in terms of the actual settings themselves, let's see if I can mess with uh, this gravel here. Let's see how uh, let's see how it changes. So the threshold itself would probably be mapped to the height. So let's go ahead and drop it. And oh, that is so cool. So right there. Let's add something like that. And hidden tiles. These are probably based off yeah based off of displacement map, which you can then load your own one. You can swap it to invert it and you can add your own. You can also add opacity to it, so you could add the strength as well, which just adds to it even more. I love it. So the rough concrete is set here with the albedo map. If you wanted to drop that and just add grunge there, you can add that. And all of the maps are stacked right under it. So you can add everything from your metalness, roughness, normal seclusion opacity and I'm assuming there is going to be a, there is a way maybe to add more as something like maybe subsurface scattering, emissive, etc. So let's go ahead and take a look at the setup. Okay, this is just your basic document settings. The display, you can change your background. So let's change it to a flat color or we can change it to a skybox. I like the gradient right now and blur the background, amazing. Lighting, so the environment lighting as well. And you can rotate the lighting through here too. 
Now there's also GPU tessellation as well if you want to go into this kind of stuff. Uh, this is something depending on your PC setup, maybe you can mix out and try yourself. And performance, of course. So everything there is everything you need pretty much to mess with at least rudimentary level performance for your PC. Now the export as well looks pretty straightforward. There's no export button right on here which I would assume there would have been one. Um, you can choose a folder by going in here, adding a folder, and you can choose which maps it exports as. So what else do they have? Let's see, PNG, enter map name. Can I? Oh, okay, so you're gonna be manually doing it yourself. Great, that's, that's easy enough. Um, you can also add resolution and automatically open the folder. Very cool. So let's go ahead and take a look at the online tab. So here is the connection to the Megascans library. I'm assuming uh, from here you can download all the Megascan assets, um, which is pretty cool. What happens if I click on one? Oh, it's gonna give me the option to download. I won't do it right now. Maybe we can get into this in a bit of a different tutorial, but that's very cool. Let's go back to the layers, that was fun. The actual concrete slab itself what else can we do oh that's the base there so we won't mess too much with that oh this is a lot of fun this scuffing is actually the details here which is being pulled in by that map and where is the export just so I know export to library and quick export so let's see what the difference is Ah, okay, so you have to make sure first you go over to the export and let's just put it in documents. It doesn't really matter. So now that that's specified, we can exp quick export. And that is now exported into my documents. And this is why I didn't want to download anything because my PC is full. And Quixel Mixer, Projects, Sample Mixes. Ah, I don't see it here. I don't see it right off the bat, which is fine, really. Um, okay, that's fine. We'll go through that later. Uh, export to library. And if I press that. Very cool. So it looks like it's exporting to some sort of library that's either being held locally Very cool. And let's take a look at all the settings. So you can actually cycle through, uh, maybe I should have done this at the beginning, but you can cycle through all of the maps and viewports as well. So albedo, and can I, no, can't use the down mouse button. Um, the metal map as well. Obviously it's concrete, so nothing's metal. Here's the roughness, normal. Um, let's see if it's like substance painter. I know C is to cycle through, no. So I don't know what that is right off the bat. That would be nice if that was highlighted in the past. You could, oh, did I do it? No, I'm going through RGB. Interesting. Ah, there we go. Yes, so it looks like the left and right, um, left and right keys uh, cycle through, cycle through all the different maps and viewports, which is great. Cool, so let's try and figure out right off the bat how we can add maybe another layer to the stack. So you can add a surface layer, decals, solid, liquid, and noise. Let's add a liquid. So click up here maybe, and then liquid. So now there's a liquid and already, oh, I love that. That's so cool. So there's already a liquid that's been added and it's a bit of a dirty, grungy, bit of a dirty grunge water. Oh, that's so cool. What other, what settings do we have? Threshold, so we can probably um, control how, yep how influence or how much it influences in the map. I kind of like it like that. Radius is probably going to be where it affects the actual edges of the map here. Yeah, so you can get it if it's just after a rainfall and it's just started to dry up a little bit and level of detail, maybe we can pull up the radius so you can see. And detail just looks like it increases the quality, especially through the shadows as well. So if you're looking to tune performance, that's a good setting to use. 
uh, surface. You can mess with the thickness of the water and depth as well. So that would be very deep water. That is not deep water. Cool, very intuitive. Uh, moistness is going to most likely affect how it, the edges around, um, around the actual pools of water are affected. So let's see. Yep, so as you can see where the water starts to fill in, these edges start to get a little, a little wetter. Always very cool. All right, so let's pull those all the way back. Don't need them to be too, too wet. Cool, so adding a liquid to that was super simple. And when you export that, that's gonna be added to the albedo, metal roughness, blah, 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 all that fun stuff. So that's super cool. What else do we have just for fun? Let's see, let's paint some stuff. So paintbrush is very intuitive and I actually like how it's the arrow is pointing directly down um, depending on most likely how the normals are facing. That's extremely useful. So I can start painting in um, colors wherever I want. And uh, honestly, that's, that's, that's good, very intuitive. And I'm, I'm very excited to test out the painting a little more, see how it stacks with something like 3D Coat and Substance Painter. Uh, erase tool is bound to E, so that's good for quick switches. And brush tool is bound to B. So what happens if I'm not selecting that and I press B? Nothing. So paint has to be, the paint layer has to be stacked already. From here, you can mesh with the brush settings, the size of the brush. <laughs> cool. What happens if I stack it at the bottom there? Very cool, so I'm painting in the color. Oh, I can't wait to mess around with this more. Um, what else do we have here while we're, while we're here? I'm gonna do maybe a couple of more things um, just so we can mess with it. Also, you can toggle on and off tiling and your grid settings. So you can kind of see if this is gonna be a ground material, how it works and how it's gonna look in your game when you export it to, of course, UE4. Um, rough concrete wrap to underlying, oh cool. Blur, and the radius, we'll up that there. Drop the blur actually. Great, so let's figure out how I add a new, let's add a new PBR layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and add, uh, assume it's a surface layer. Ah, okay, so I press add surface layer, it takes us to here. And let's add some mud into that water as well, I guess. So soil mud here. And just like that, it's already added some soil to it. And let's go ahead and change the, how do I change the color? Can I change the color? Yes. Let's make it a little darker brown. And what about the threshold. So I want it to only really be, maybe this is for another video. Oh, cool, just like that. So I maybe only want the dirt to use something like the curvature map or only reflect the water or only go into the water. So maybe that's for another video where I can kind of take my own time and figure that out on my own. But so far, honestly, this has been very simple and very, very easy to use. So let's check out a decals layer. I don't have anything for decals, so that's okay. Add a, let's add another, one more surface layer, just for fun. Um, looks like they've got a lot of stuff here, whatever this is. And there we go. Some sort of like, maybe marble material, I'm not even sure. So let's increase. Oh yeah, what if I did something like that. Okay, so let's back to the, the the soil mud thing. Is there a radius? Yeah, so maybe it starts to group around that and the threshold. And let's wrap to underlying. How about that? So that looks like it ties it much closely to um, the actual height map itself. Increase the radius. And 
the color matches to the color below it. Very cool. So wrap to underlying in any circumstance or match to underlying basically takes the layer below it or whatever is below it and tries to match it as closely as possible. So in this sense, it is taking the height map or the displacement map underneath and you can see it slowly, almost like, um, think about it as when you um, vacuum seal a bag or something. This is kind of what's happening. The top layer is the plastic itself and the bottom layer is the contents inside and it suddenly gets sucked onto it. So maybe with a more dramatic, um, Maybe with a more dramatic example, I'll be able to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, you can also easily move around everything. So now we've just by simply swapping one thing, I've got a brand new, basically an, essentially a brand new material. Very cool. So custom tiles, let's see. These are pulled in by a custom map, by a simple displacement map. And we can change that if I load it in something else, but I don't have anything else on hand right now because I was super unprepared. Uh, what happens if we drop the moisture? Nothing. Very cool. So I think that's pretty much it. I'm sorry, I'm just having so much fun doing this. Okay, you know what? Um, let's end the video right here. I think that's more than enough. I just wanted to do a quick video to show off some of the, maybe, maybe a first impression. Uh, overall, this was f super awesome. I really actually really enjoyed it right off the bat. And you can see maybe within the first five, 10 minutes of me using this, I've basically got the essentials for the most part. I know there's a ton you can do with the painting and whatever, but I've got the basic idea of it down within five to 10 minutes. So I think that speaks volumes to how simple this this software really is. So huge kudos to the team at Quixel. Um, I've got some spare time on my hands, so I'm going to be doing some tutorials. I'm going to basically take all of my time and kind of mess with it a little more. Hopefully I can learn some really cool stuff. I'd love to be one of the main guys who does texturing tutorials for this, uh, especially for this whole ecosystem is so awesome. So I hope you guys thought this was really cool. Let me know if you want to see more in the comments below. Is there anything I missed? Anything you guys wanted to see? Please let me know. Give it a like, give it a thumbs up, subscribe. I think um, a lot of people are going to see this and have never seen this channel before. So um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this and maybe my first impressions. This was a bit of a raw video with no editing. I just wanted to get a quick video out there because it's trending and I was so so excited about this. So super cool to see. Maybe in some other videos, I'll show you a quick how to make something from scratch. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, guys, this was Thomas from Stylized Station. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.